I have here uh, Richard Kane, filmmaker, Jill Hoy. And you'll also recognize Ron Hoffman from Compassionate Care for ALS. Um, uh, a totally speechless, just a magnificent piece of work on every level. Um, and I uh, wish we had the rest of the day to talk about this, but um, basically I'd love to hear from all three of you as, as much as possible. I'll, I'll start with uh, Richard. Um, did you uh, come on board? When did you come on board in this project? Before the diagnosis? After the diagnosis? After the diagnosis. However, the, uh, this is part of a series of films called Maine Masters. It's the 15th. And John was selected several years before. And as the process goes, we start making a film when we raise the money for somebody. And then I found out through um, the gallery that represents him in Portland, Maine, uh, that uh, John was diagnosed. This is like about August of 2012. And when we found out that uh, John was diagnosed with ALS, we knew that we needed to move very, very quickly and uh, find the funding. And we did within just a few months. Uh, there's so many people that came behind this project, including uh, John and Jill who were um, just phenomenal as subjects and then friends, and uh, John became a brother to me. And it's always hard to talk after seeing the film. I probably should go outside, not see the film, then come back in, because it's, uh, it's, it's very emotional. And um, even during the editing, um, you know, I'd lay in a piece of music that was Noel Paul Stuckey's music from uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, and um, I just would break down crying every time at the editing table. So it's tough. Anyway, I think it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> um, oh, and by the before I forget, we have DVDs if you want to give them to friends who haven't seen it, because there are some seats here that weren't taken. So, uh, yeah, special, means, special deal today. And, and I'll say this now, um, before we, we uh, whenever we have to break up, but please continue the conversation in the lobby, because uh, there's a lot to be said about this in, in so many different ways. Um, uh, Jill, I, I, I've talked to you about this a little bit because it's a question for uh, Richard, but especially for you, that's the, the, the incredible indomitable spirit which uh, Ron was recognizing in terms of dancing with what was coming up, but the honesty, the, 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 the candor um, from the very beginning when he's looking at the diagnosis and he's talking about the anxiety and saying, will that go away or will it be a part of it, but so matter of fact about it and then continuing to be matter of fact and the sense of humor um, and the joy and 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 throughout the, the discussion of surprise, surprising himself, turning it upside down and to do these different things, and the, these things keep recurring, and the, and the spontaneity that's a, a available to him from the left hand and the, the liberation, the discovery from these challenges, all these things that he got and and brought out so beautifully in the film. But can you talk a little bit about um, the the sort of between the two of you and, and both of you holding on through this and keeping your spirits up. So how, how that experience went while you're making the film at the same time. I mean, it's, it's a very private, intimate thing to go through, but then so beautifully captured in the film. So can you just talk about it a little bit? We live in two communities, um, one being Somerville, Mass, outside Boston, and one Stonington, Maine, in the Penobscot Bay, mid-coast Maine. And I've got to say, the, you sow your seeds as you go, certainly, but the amount of community and people that came forth to help hold us, support us, uh, reinforce us was extraordinary, and um, it's a good way to do it. And I made it a more permeable. Both of us were, our life became very permeable and accepted the comings and goings of people, both to give relief t so I could refuel and come back with a freshness that I really wanted to make life worth him sticking around for as long as he could. And um, every, you know, he had people coming and reading and helping him paint and sitting and being said goodbye to essentially. Um, Yeah, so 
that was a big part yeah. of it. And if they, uh, the, the beauty of it was, and I, and I think this is a, a pos possible place to get something from Ron, but um, it, it, everybody wanted to make things uh, work better for him towards the end um, and, and support him and, and, and give to him and, and help him with this. But he was so helpful to everybody around him that had to deal with it. And made it made it's it that something. cycle. Yes. You know, you give it back, and and I just want to say, Ron Hoffman, who runs Compassionate Care ALS, on a grassroots level, was so incredibly essential to us and bringing us hospital beds and mo lifts and every grassroots thing, but also the ability. John really wanted to talk about death. And he was very aware it was coming. He wanted to talk about everything. And Ron was, having been through this innumerable times and done his own work of investigating in many levels, he was a perfect, John was perfect. Um, take it away. Uh, just, yeah, just because of your work that you've been doing for however long you've been doing it and becoming a part of this family, this, this extended family, as well as that, that intimate family. And um, just tell us a little bit about the experience, as, as, as you did in the film, in terms of comparisons to the way other people do this and what, what your experience has been with this, with, with John. You know, after seeing this film numerous times now, every time I see it, I, I, I hear things and I see things that... I wasn't aware of before. And the depth that which John was able to go to, and Jill, uh, the layers, the um, peeling away layer after layer, allowing his circumstance to uh, not shun from the circumstance that he faced. And for me, his paintings were such a metaphor for that. How the family, so consciously engaged, uh, you know, the uninvited guest, if you will. Uh, every once in a while, I meet families who are willing to, uh, you know, navigate the terrain as they did. But uh, there's no better example in my experience um, of someone who did so, so incredibly consciously. And for me, it's, uh, you know, everything that I do everything that we do uh, is an invitation. And, you know, Jill and I were talking about it not long ago. The first time uh, I went to their home, I was very much invited in without the word, you know, it was a very natural thing, a very natural connection. And for me, it was, uh, you know, becoming part of the journey, walking with John and walking with Jill. And nothing more important than to sit down at the table and John would just drop into this place when there were changes and how do I now do this? And so we would engage, you know, and in a very beautiful way. Um, so what we try to do, what I try to do is just walk with people and show up and be where John was, be with Jill where she is and uh, take our, my cue from them. Um, I'm fortunate that a uh, beautiful friendship uh, came from this. And that's the opportunity that we sometimes have. And uh, in my experience of working with well over a thousand families, all not as intimately as I was allowed to be with uh, John and Jill, um, you know, that's, the, uh, that's what allows me to keep doing what I do. Uh, so it's, it's a very sacred work. In many ways, John and Jill did this in a very sacred, beautiful way. Well, I think that uh, certainly the painting was sacred to John and, uh, and in your lives, and, and it's a way of getting at everything that was going on. And uh, the, the discussion of, it, when he says, I, I, don't ha I, don't, I wonder if I need to be a painter, and it's so obvious to the entire planet that, of course, there's nothing else you could possibly be, which you point out later on. But you also pointed out what he had said, which was, it's more important to me to be a father and a husband and a friend 
and he was all those things as much as he was a painter, as fully engaged as he was as a painter. But um, the triumph, one of the many, many triumphs, was that in the challenge, and this, is, this happens in great genius and in great love, is uh, seeing in the challenge the opportunity. Seeing that this is not just a challenge, this is, and his spirits were, I don't think he was lying at all. I, I mean, you can attest to this, that he says my spirits are at a nine. They were at a nine. I mean, they were higher than most people that don't have any affliction whatsoever. So, but the, the, the capturing of what was going on in there and the two principal elements, the double L's, the love and laughter. I mean, they were just shot through everything that happened. The love of the painting, the love of the friends, and the, the circle. The, the circle between the two of you. And um, um, my heart goes out so much to everybody but your son um, and in, in the way that he's trying to deal with this. And just the honesty and, and the love and the laughter, just, just beyond belief, to capture that, Richard. The laughter was something that, that John brought to every relationship, every moment. Uh, and what it did was it opened the door to let people in. And there was no eggshells around John. You didn't have to, you know, you could just engage with him. And he was just so embracing. He was a, a very beautiful, beautiful man. And uh, I think what this, his story and Jill's story tells all of us is that we need to find, uh, if we haven't found, a, a real passion in life. And that's what keeps us going. John's was Jill and, and his painting and his son. Um, and that's what keeps us going to the, that's what kept John going to the very end. That's what made him feel that, you know, feeling uh, joy, embracing joy in the midst of his ALS summer, you know? He was a man about joy, and uh, we'd like to share this story with as many people as we can. Well, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's admirable. I think that's, uh, the piece of it that's, that's interesting to me is also the gratitude, because he was grateful in so many ways for his limitations because of what it enabled him to do. Plus which, as a comedian, he was grateful for the punchlines. He got so many great punchlines out of this, talking about how he used to have to turn them upside down and fill them with doom, and now he's got a shitload. You know, and it's like, he just, he just set them up, set them up, and then here, my disease has given me this punchline. I've got the wonderful punchlines from my comedy routine. You're very good. You really <laughs> took in this movie. We can leave. We'll leave. We'll leave Andy here. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, it's just, just an amazing gift that he's given to us, that you've given us with this film. For me, it says just how incredibly authentic authentic human being he was. Absolutely. All right. And just touching base, dovetailing on what you spoke about his statement about his son. And if I may, I sat with John once and he said, I want to talk to you about Gabe. And I said, okay. And in my experience, uh, many families want their children to stay off at school. Go. We've got this. You don't need to worry about us. I see that all the time. And John's question to me, he wanted to know what I thought about something. And uh, so I listened to his question. And uh, I believe Gabe, it was his first year at school. And he said, I'm thinking about asking Gabe to come home. And he wanted to know what I thought. And that's the first time I've ever, in, ever encountered a parent wanting their son or daughter to be at home. And when I asked him why, and I knew the answer, but I really wanted to explore it because this was incredibly powerful to me. Uh, I said, why do you want Gabe to be home? And he said, I want to spend what life I have left with my son. So his statement in the movie, that's beyond extraordinary and beyond real. It's uh, from, a, from his heart. And I think it also goes to the fact that he wanted to help his son deal with it. And, if, and I think if you're away and you're not there part of it, the, it makes it much, much worse after you've gone if you haven't seen it. And I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision for Gabe. From, I mean, Gabe was 18 at the time, but Gabe came home. And he was part of the process. He was incredibly involved with his father's care. He tended to his father in extraordinary ways. Oh, One more thing about Gabe. Um, we, I was cutting, and one of our advisors was a, a great friend of Jill and, um, and John's, uh, Claudia Weinstein. And um, Claudia said to me, when we had that part about Gabe saying that he didn't love it, those paintings, I don't love it. She says, 
That's really hurtful. I don't know if we should keep that in there. So, I was, you know, I was going back and forth about that. So, but finally, I did take it out. And then the next day, the Boston Globe came out with a review on the front page. As my mother would have said, that's wonderful, but it's below the fold. <laughs> so it was indeed below the fold. That line plays well at the Jewish film festivals. Um, but the article started out about, and, and this was the reviewer, uh, Sebastian Smee, uh, saw the film with that line in there. And, um, and that's what the whole review was about. The fact that Gabe was enabled by his parents to speak the truth and to tell his father that he didn't love it. So he had to put it back in. <laughs> so that's why he saw it. And Gabe was completely honest about it, saying, you know, everybody feels like they have to say something nice, and I don't want to do that, and that wasn't the nature of his relationship with his father. So I, th I don't think you could have taken it. I wouldn't let you take that. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I think we might have time for, do we have time? Or we don't have time? We have time. We don't, don't have ask. time. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> but please do continue to speak with these wonderful people in the lobby afterwards um, because, and get, get these DVDs, get them out to as many people as you possibly can because uh, this is just a phenomenal piece of work about a phenomenal man and a phenomenal relationship. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.